I got a fever, and the only prescription is more Purple for the Win podcast with Andy Carlson. Come to you all off-season long, covering free agency, the draft, OTAs, and then we're on to training camp. Get the show on 1500 ESPN, Podcast One, and the Podcast One app. And whose team is this? Is this your team, or is this your daddy's team? Thanks for listening to the Dad Mode Podcast, common sense parenting in a politically correct world. Here's your host, Andy Carlson. Welcome back to the Dad Mode Podcast, common sense parenting in a politically correct world. I'm your host, Andy Carlson, at Andy Carlson Show on the Twitter machine. I'm a father. I have no idea what I'm doing, but you know, either they're Chiefy, Chief Arino. Chifa, 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 dun, 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 dun. Uh, so let's try and learn something together today. The website is dadmodepod.com. Uh, tweet at the show at dadmode. Use the hashtag and dadmode. And as always, to support us in the easiest way you know how, dadmodepod.com slash Amazon. Take it right to the homepage, bookmark it, and then we get some credit when you buy some stuff up in there. Uh, today, uh, something I've been noticing uh, since Muggsy has turned two, and it, we've gotten into the mimic phase, the the whole monkey see, monkey do phase, and uh, the the honeymoon is over. Uh, the The honeymoon where yeah, a lot of parents do this, and I'm sure I'm guilty of this as well. But going on the social media and putting on that. Oh, my my six month old kid is completely zonked out. Except he's watching Saw. Oh, look how edgy I am as a parent. Cool. Or you know the photos of the kids holding the beer. Like I I understand that that's um, it it, it was funny like when it first happened, but uh, yeah, it's a little it's a little effed out. Yeah, it it, it kind of is. But now as the kids get older and are starting to become a little bit more aware of things, and they're at the stage where they want to feel like they want to elicit a reaction. Like they, they're sort of miniature praise junkies, all of them. And they just want you know, mom and dad and friends and family and grandma and grandma to look at them and be like, Oh, you were so cute. Look at you. Right. And their easiest way to do that, what gets the most reaction is when they do adult things or when they copy what they see adults doing. And it's cool. It's all well and good. It's how you get kids to say, please, thank you, you're welcome. Um, look people in the eye when they're shaking their hand uh, out there doing work. Like, like the wife is doing some landscaping projects and you know, Muggsy's getting down the dirt, getting her hands dirty. She's she's learning how to uh, do that stuff and, and work, and it, it, it's good. But also, there's the other side. And um, it, it's both in what you say and what you do. And I, I'll admit, I, I've been a little freewheeling uh, with this. I've been having Muggsy you know, watch... Yeah, you know, maybe some episodes of House of Cards, maybe some movies that have some questionable language, and but now we're starting to get to that phase where she's starting to parrot and mimic uh, some of those words, some of those actions, some of those things, and yeah, so we're gonna have to be a little bit more careful now. This is now the dead zone. This is now the dead zone between age, uh, well, for for uh, a young girl, probably two to sixteen. Where not going to be able to watch like uh, a bloody, gory war movie or horror movie in front of her unless she matures fast for her age. Uh, because, I mean, there, there's some guys that still can't watch Blood and Guts and some girls that you know, 11 years old are watching Save a Private Ryan with their dad eating some Cheetos. And they're perfectly fine with it. Um, yeah, and also the... <laughs> uh, so there's something that I do with my wife. Now, not, not what you're thinking, but it, it's something so subconscious that I, I, I don't even think about Muggsy being in the room. And you, you you know how you play grab ass with your significant other. It, it goes back to when you're dating and then you're newlyweds renting your first apartment together. It's like, oh, it's so cool having a place to our own. And, and now uh, that we're in the house and it, you're still playing grab ass. You're in the kitchen and, you know, she's... um. 
uh, doing some things, filling some water bottles, doing whatever, and then you just come up behind her, and then you uh, do the Mike Tyson, uh, or actually more like uh, Rocky Balboa speed bag on her ass, you know, with the do 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 do, yeah, with the hands. Except now, I I because I've been doing that for years, right? That's like my go-to thing of do 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 do. That's the move. But now with Muggsy around. She walks up to mom right afterwards and then starts throwing hands right at her ass. And now it's like, oh, probably shouldn't do that because, you know, if she sees this enough and then does the action enough, it sort of becomes muscle memory and also it becomes what she does. So then she'll go to childcare or the schoolyard and then just walk up to a a little three-year-old Molly and then go Rocky Balboa on her ass and go do 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 yeah, so we have to be a little bit aware of that. That's why I'm always, as a child care, if I was a child care professional, and if you are one out there, miles of tough, your job is not easy. And then you see kids come in, and you know they're really quiet, and then all, they just bust out with fits of rage and anger. And then all of a sudden, you, you see them like open hand slap another kid and t- yell at them to shut up. Yeah, you always wonder, that's not coming out of whole cloth. I mean, that's not just coming out of nowhere. Usually. I mean, they've seen that somewhere, and that makes you question their home life. Yeah, but not trying to get too philosophical on it. And uh, all right, so uh, as a dog owner, I, I know that dogs are our best friends, and who rescued who, but blah, blah, blah. But uh, our dogs are small dogs, and small dogs means yippee dogs. So uh, every little sound that happens outside the house, it's and, you know, the default reaction for you, uh, especially when you didn't have kids was, hey, shush, shut up. Hey, shut up. Shut your mouth. You shut your mouth, boy, when you're talking to me. Shush. But now. When, say, over 4th of July, dogs are barking at some random fireworks, and then we tell them to shut up, and then Muggsy walks over there, and then she goes, shut up, shut up. And I know on the grand scheme of things, shut up is not necessarily... uh, All right, so on a scale of 1 being normal language, 10 being an uh, N-bomb, telling a dog to shut up is probably about a 4, but we're trying to keep it to 1s and 2s here. Uh, as she's uh, two years old, but I, I'm, I've gotten to the point where I, I don't care what other people think of me and, and it's very freeing, right? You, you want to obviously keep up appearances. I'm not going to be showing up to the grocery store looking like uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff Bridges, the dude from big Lebowski, but not trying to impress anyone. That's fine. But I feel like with kids and parenting, there's a lot of, uh, um, satellite warfare going on. Like uh, Vietnam, the United States was fighting, <clears throat> uh, the uh, South Vietnamese were fighting the North Vietnamese, but really it was Russia versus the United States. Sort of those things. Oh, proxy wars. There we go. And that's what it is with parenting. And, and that's why you see when kids are decked out to the nines and they're wearing the brand new Jordans and all that stuff, it's not really about the kid. It's not really about little eight-year-old junior wanting the jo- the Jordan twenty twos, which even uh, as kids' shoes are sixty-five bucks and a shoe that they're gonna destroy, run through mud puddles, and then outgrow in two months. No, that's about the parent. Yeah, that's about the parent projecting their bills of like, look at me, we're so well off that I can afford sixty to eighty dollars shoes that my kids are gonna grow out of in two weeks. They ain't no hand me downs around here. It, it, it's proxy wars of showing off and. In the same vein, if your kid is out there, like we mentioned, open hand slapping kids and telling kids to shut up and all that stuff, that's a reflection on you. Yeah, that's um. Although I feel like parents don't um take the the latter to heart as much. You know, with their kids have the face are dirty, they've been wearing the same shirt for four days in a row, and all they do at cafeteria is eat buttered noodles. And they don't say please, they don't say thank you, they tell everyone to shut up, and then all of a sudden there's like, oh, this guy's got he's got ADHD, he's got some light Aspergers, sure, and yeah, yeah, you know, that, that's the ticket, yeah, and that doesn't really register. I, I'm more of the latter, like I, I, 
I, I don't have the narcissism to dress Muggsy up in $60 shoes, and I'm glad that the wife doesn't have that gene either because that's absolutely stupid. It's a, it's a waste of money. The kid doesn't even care. The kid doesn't appreciate it. And you, you just, you, frankly, you just look stupid. It's not, it's not prudent financially, and also who, who cares? No one's impressed by you. But the latter part, I, I am very uh, aware of, of that part. So, like, taking Muggsy to child care, Always make sure her face is wiped, her hair is done up well. You know, she has a fresh diaper and, you know, stuff that doesn't make you feel bad for the kid. And then also you kind of raise an eyebrow at the parent. And the to bring it full circle, the telling kids and pets to shut up or you're shooing them out of the way with your foot. Not, you know, not kicking, you know, not straight up drop kicking uh, dogs in uh, in the ribs, although I'm sure that there's... um. I'm sure there's a bunch of examples of that out there, sadly. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just the, the manners, the please and thank you, the not telling people to F off, the not telling people to shut up thing. Yeah, I think that's a big reflection on parenting. And also what's really big with me is I love talk radio. I, I, I love podcasts. And I listen to that uh, all, all the time when we're driving. And uh, Mugs, Mugsy likes music, so sometimes we'll go with music. And also sometimes if – you know, we're, we kind of got time to kill. Muggsy just loves watching music videos on the TV and then dancing along. And yeah, you know, we'll go with the sort of lighter stuff, the the Taylor Swifts of the world. Although she did respond pretty favorably to uh, Billy Joel recently, so that's fun. And um, yeah, the the whole thing was about talk radio and podcasts. Uh, so I, I love Adam Carolla. I love Howard Stern. Yeah, and if you're familiar with those two, yeah, the language and the topics not exactly um, kid friendly, and it, it'll get exponentially worse uh, until she's eight, nine, ten years old. Ah, ah, later than that, uh, like I feel like once a kid is fourteen, fifteen years old, then you can start listening to the radio with the cussing and the sort of off color topics, depending on the kid's maturity level. I think it's fine, but. Uh, not ready to give up my podcast, not ready to go full top 40 pop music, but, uh, so I love Freakonomics. I, I love Dan Carlin's hardcore history. Now those are, uh, bat foul language free and are usually on topics that are perfectly fine for a two to 14 year old. And I, I kind of want to make m- my kid a nerd. I, I-, I do. I want to make them a history nerd, a nerd that's very inquisitive about things like um, uh, why is uh, why did the industrial revolution change the world? You know, why did FM radio become a thing? And, and, and those sort of things. I, I want them to be curious and always be wondering why is that? Why is that? Because he, I'll, I'll kids start off with why? Why is water? How come it's raining? Blah blah blah. And it's more of a new, uh, um, it's more of an annoyance phase. Yeah, you know, they're not really interested. They they don't care why the the ducks are flying south. They really don't. They just want to bug your ass with questions. But I I want to have Muggsy and future kids to be actually inquisitive about such things. So I think Freakonomics, Hardcore History, and a bunch of other educational podcasts are right up that that alley. So that's what we listen to in the car. And yeah, you know, I just want her to be learning. I don't want her to be dumb like Dad. I don't want her to just. Um, you know, absorb top 40 pop music all the time although i'm sure there's a time and a place for that i'm sure she'll be dragging my ass down to the x for concerts for teeny bopper um xyz on you know once she's you know 12 to 15 years old which is fine which is fine but uh, overall starting to be very aware and cognizant of what i'm saying in front of mugsy what i'm listening to and what we're watching and now we do this until she's out of the house. Yeah, good times. Uh, if you enjoy us, tell a friend, spread the word. And if you're in a dad and mom groups, do it up. The show's available on iTunes, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. And follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, all in Andy Carlson Show. And the website for the show, dadmodepod.com. But until next time, be a man, be a father, go dad mode. We'll check you Think later. the episode you just heard is worth a dollar? Well, send it our way. Visit dadmodepod.com slash support to find out how. Be a man. Be a father. Go dad mode.
The music is created and produced by Deeb. To hear more of his tracks, visit soundcloud.com slash Deeb.